Business Weekly. Many business owners remember the dark times of 2008, especially my next guest, David Nygaard, who in 2008 declared bankruptcy and had to shut down seven jewelry stores in Hampton Roads. David, thank you so much for your transparency today and talking with us about those dark times and how you've come back from them. Well, thank you for having me. Actually, as an entrepreneur, you're going to have good times and bad times. And, um, and those were certainly the dark times. So we opened in 2006 our uh, sixth store, and we were named Virginia Business of the Year. And uh, Hampton Roads Chamber of Commerce had um, endorsed me as uh, their Business of the Year. And then Best Places to Work, we had a really good business model. And then 2008 <coughs> happens, and the economy right. does not help you, and other things happen. Well, and well what really hurt us was that in, in 2006, we had been recruited uh, to change banks by Wachovia. And uh, Wachovia, at the same time, was buying these crazy mortgage companies. And so in 2008, fast forward from six to eight, um, they were having trouble. And so they, I think they needed precious, they needed cash and they needed precious metals. And so they were looking for my inventory. Mm -hmm. So in 2008, they basically forced us to shut down um, with really little notice. We didn't really have an opportunity to even raise the capital. They gave us about 60 days to try to raise capital, which in 2008 just wasn't going to happen. So they shut us down. Um, and my, uh, my parents used to be in the jewelry business, I don't know if you knew that, but my, my mom actually started doing uh, what was a rock count. And so um, they stepped up and helped me to reopen new companies with capital that Wachovia couldn't claim. So we, we reopened and uh, were able to reopen a couple stores and, and were able then to, with a new company, to deliver to our clients and to some of our suppliers a continuing business model. What did you do next? How to well, come back? Well, you have to realize that that there's when you have a business, you have many things. And mm -hmm. so Wachovia at the time was looking for assets, and uh, but we also had a revenue stream, and we had a uh, we had a name and a revenue stream and some key people, and so we were able to use the, you know, my my expertise and some key people to reopen and keep a revenue stream going. Because if you can't keep the revenue stream going, right. then you can't pay other people and take care of other. Um, stakeholders in the business. In 2017, your business looks much different. Yes. I mean, you went in a completely different direction, mm -hmm. which you might have had to have done anyway. Right. Had nothing exactly. had happened. Exactly. Um, what did you do and what do you do now with so, your jewelry business? So what I found myself in 2008 was uh, my inventory was um, under litigation. Everybody was arguing over it. But I had these pieces of software that were early prototype kind of software, a, a, a computer-aided design, mm -hmm. CAD software. And I didn't know how to use it. So one of the things I thought, well, I'm going to go and, and learn how to. So I went back to school to, to, <laughs> to learn how to use CAD programming. And so I, I, when I was there, I saw the power of the ability to render um, theoretical images of jewelry and design it and, and do it. And so I could, for the first time, make a whole line of jewelry without investing a dime in gold or other precious metals or, or gemstones or diamonds. And so, um, so I took that model and I said that we can do something great with this and, and we can create a customized jewelry program, a, a, a business model where we, where we can make exactly the ring that you want, one at a time, exactly for you, um, and personalize it. And we can do it in a um, in a very quick turnaround because we do it all in the, we do it all right here on site. So in in my store we have the jeweler we do we do all the work right there. So you're taking technology and doing to it, yeah, right. work your business model and reach people with giving them what they want. Exactly. Last thing, mm -hmm. what would you say to somebody, a business owner who is struggling with some dark times in their business, where they feel like maybe they can't cross over and and succeed and continue. Well, I think, I think that the key thing is, is that you only fail when you quit, <laughs> right? When you, when you keep trying, you're, you're still trying, and you're still trying to be successful. So I think, I think the key is to not um, give up. Um, and you have to look at the opportunities that you still have, um, because no matter how dark it is, sometimes there are doors that are opening you don't even realize mm -hmm. to new technologies, new ways of doing business that, that you know, didn't exist. And so you just have to kind of be open to change. I am, um, you know, life is about changes. So, so sometimes you just have to kind of float back, float on your back, and kind of let the river take you where you're going to go, and just quit fighting it. And you just go and you just adapt. Well, thank you for Absolutely. sharing your story with our audience. We appreciate thank that. Thank you very much. 
And with that, we wrap up another edition of Hampton Roads Business Weekly. Make sure you like us on Facebook and Twitter and then head over to hrbusinessweekly.com to get more information and watch previous shows. For Hampton Roads Business Weekly, I'm Zach Miller. And I'm Cheryl Tan. We'll see you next week. Hampton Roads Business Weekly, sponsored by Regent University and produced by 13 News Now.